Growing up in Port Arthur, it seemed that no matter what the sport was, Bill Keenan was eager to take part in it. At a young age, he began to exhibit the qualities of a truly all-round athlete, excelling in swimming during the summer months and on the hills of Loch Lomond in the winter. A standout during his years at Hammersholt High School, he helped lead the Vikings to victory on the football field, in gymnastics and on the ski slopes, being named co-winner of the 1976 Senior Male Athlete of the Year Award. When Bill took part in a sport, he did so without fear. The higher and faster he could go, the happier he was. Well known for his exceptional water skiing abilities, his talents earned him a trip to the Ontario Summer Games, where he competed in slalom. He didn't always need a ski to ride the water, often going barefoot. He also liked to soar through the air by kite flying behind a boat and off the hills of Loch Lomond. The desire to be airborne led Bill to designing and building some innovative training tools that were ahead of their time. During the 1970s, he and his friends constructed a 35-foot high jump out of logs and scaffolding, which allowed them to practice their aerial maneuvers safely landing in Lake Shabandawan. Following high school, he headed to the University of Calgary to pursue a commerce degree and continue his athletic endeavors, serving as a member of the school's gymnastics team when it won the 1978 Western Canadian Championship title. Having developed his skills in the relatively new sport of freestyle skiing back in Thunder Bay, a sport that combines the disciplines of aerial, ballet and moguls, with the Rocky Mountains now in his backyard, his time out west also saw him continue his high-flying ways on the slopes. Competing in Alberta and in national championships, his gymnastic training came in handy in the disciplines of ballet and aerials, but it was in moguls that he would eventually focus his training and it paid off. Named to Canada's national freestyle team in 1980, he remained on the squad until his retirement in 1986. In his very first year on the team, he finished second overall in World Cup moguls competitions, earning him Rookie of the Year honours. In 1981, he became the first Canadian ever to win a World Cup moguls event going on to win nine in total over the course of his career. Training hard, he continued to make his presence known at competitions around the world. And in 1983, he won it all, claiming the World Cup Moguls overall championship title. Going on to add more World Cup gold to his ever-growing collection, in 1985, he also added the Canadian Moguls crown to his record of success. In the world in Moguls right here, this is the final matchup. Bill Keenan from Canada, Billy Braun from France. Billy Keenan just ripping apart the course on the blue course. He's going straight down really quick. And look at Philippe Ron answer back with a spread eagle. Bill Keenan now his spread eagle. Oh, Lulu they call him. Philippe Ron going awful quick. And here comes Billy Keenan down the bottom of the course with a twister. A spread by Philippe Ron across the finish line. It's anybody's race. Dead heat. Billy Keenan holds up his hand. Here comes Peter Judge's coach. Peter thinks he's won. Bill Keenan really flew down the mountain on those 195s, and look at that, four to one, Bill Keenan wins. And here comes the Canadian team. Bill Keenan, he can water ski and windsurf in the summer, but I'll tell you, he is one of the best mogul skiers in the world. And he's getting more air here. Here's the Canadian team holding them up, showing them off. Oh, are they proud. The Canadian team is great. Although retiring from active competition in 1986, his presence was not gone for long. When Calgary hosted the 1988 Olympic Winter Games, he was asked to serve as a color commentator for freestyle skiing, which appeared as a demonstration sport. When the Royal Canadian Mint was looking for an image to appear on their $20 coin to commemorate freestyle skiing at the Calgary Olympics, they selected one of Bill, taken at a Canadian freestyle competition early on in his career. His talents on the snow also earned him a chance to make motion picture history by appearing as a stunt skier in the 1985 James Bond movie, A View to Kill. Filmed on a glacier in St. Moritz, the skiers were flown to the set in helicopters and carried real guns as part of their spy costumes. As one of the pioneers of freestyle skiing and one of Canada's most successful World Cup mogul skiers, Bill earned entry into the Canadian Ski Hall of Fame in 2001. Throughout his career, Bill never forgot his roots, traveling back to Thunder Bay to provide workshops for the next generation of skiers. He continues to take to the slopes himself and remains involved in sport by participating in windsurfing, mountain biking, and until most recently, triathlon competitions. When asked to name the highlight of his skiing career, it was the friends that he made along the way and the camaraderie that existed between freestyle skiers in those early days that meant the most to him, spoken like a true champion.